morning. Today we're going to be talking about how static posture when you're standing will affect resting muscle tone. So I'll explain that throughout the video here, but we're using doc, the other Dr. Beard, Sloan, to demonstrate some of these things. So we get a lot of patients that when we come in right behind, I'm going to have Sloan turn this way a little bit. When we come in right behind the tibia and kind of squeeze, so if we got our tibia right here and our fibula off to the side and we squeeze in between those two and get right behind the tibia on the inside here, most people are just going to light up and that's going to be pretty tender, especially our runners. Now that can come from overuse of that muscle through running and different activities like that. But if you, we've had a few people that take quite a bit of time off, they come back, this thing is still rocked up. So a lot of the times we see that that's actually, actually a postural sway issue. So ideal, we're going to have Sloan take this foot back a little bit. We're going to have this face the camera. So we can see this nice medial longitudinal arch. So we got three arches in our foot. We got the medial longitudinal, or it goes lengthwise along the uh, foot, and this is what we think of as the arch of the foot. We have the lateral longitudinal arch, because there is an arch right here that actually gives us a little bit of load dampening as we walk and run. And then we have the transverse arch of the foot here that gives us that frontal arch, so the, the base of our metatarsals right here are not just on the ground and banging into the ground all the time, so there's a nice kind of spring. Now, if we have proper weight distribution, we can look at these on all sorts of foot scanners, on body track systems. There should be even distribution of weight from the middle of the calcaneus over to the head of the fifth metatarsal over to the head of the first metatarsal. Now, if we have proper distribution, it acts like a tripod and the weight distribution is even. That's ideal. But what, more often than not, what we see is too much weight shift. So now let's get Sloan's feet together. Too much weight shift to the back or on the heels. And that's somebody that's kind of in a posterior postural sway. Now, a few things that can happen to somebody with that, not just in the calf or the foot, is that can be somebody that maybe has chronically tight hip flexors. So if my body feels like I'm constantly falling backwards because of whatever postural dysfunction I have or static muscular dysfunction I have, my hip flexors and even my rectus abdominis, maybe my quads are gonna turn on to correct that. And then I go through this chronic sway correction, sway correction, and over time, these just become statically fixated now that's not a muscle flexibility mobility issue, that's a neurologic control issue. Now the, the opposite correlate to that would be too much anterior weight shift and this is the one that I'm kind of talking about today because we see this a lot and this is where you're going to get a lot of that tightness on the, the muscles that lie right up against the back of the tibia. So your posterior tibialis, your flexor halcus, flexor halcus longus, all those muscles get rocked up because as I tilt forward they want to correct to bring me back. So I go through an anterior sway and correct. Now here, some other chronic tight muscles, hamstrings, lumbar erectors. So if I'm falling forward, my correction is going to bring me back. So that's where I get this posterior chain tightness that won't let go. Now, there's a lot of ways that you can correct this. Now we could beat up these muscles, the posterior tube, we could roll everything out, we can go through dynamic stretches, but really we have to fix our dynamic posture. Right? So posture, we think that it's static, but it's really dynamic because all these muscles should be relatively quiet from head to toe, but there's also kind of what we call a co-contraction occurring that's keeping us in this sway. Because just like the arch in St. Louis has sway built into it so the thing doesn't topple over, that's just how our body is. We're not completely fixated when standing. We're constantly going through micro movements and stabilizing those. So next time you're just kind of standing around, and bare feet would be the best because sometimes our shoes will throw us into a displaced dynamic posture, just the way that the shoes made. Just feel, do you have proper weight distribution from heel to big toe or the ball of your foot out to this fifth metatarsal or the edge of your foot? There should be a nice, even distribution of weight. Then we want to take that through the running gait. Obviously we have kind of that heel to toe, maybe we're saying four foot to toe as we're going through the cycle. But if I don't have it just standing here, there's no way I'm getting it through the running cycle. Because that's a far more uh, aggressive and progressive movement that's going to call for more muscular function and sequencing. So if you tend to be chronically tight in any of these, posterior chain, anterior chain, that's not the end all be all. It's not all just dynamic posture, but that could be a big player. So check what the distribution of your feet feels like and uh, hopefully that'll kind of help you figure out what's going on.